Today I'm going to be going over a quick tip to improve any foliage you have in the Blender game engine. So usually I tend to see trees like this in the Blender game engine or bushes like this and it's like just they don't look quite right and very nice. So there's a quick way to improve it and that is baking ambient occlusion as you can see here. In the bush you can see it's much more improved. And also in this tree here, you can see it's very much improved. Um, as you can see, it's really improved with just this ambient occlusion. Instead of having all these leaves look like they're, they're, they're emitting light or something, it really looks like the light can't get in here and it's an actual tree that's got leaves that's stopping light. So. We're going to go ahead and learn how to do it with the basic bush, but the same concept can easily be applied to a tree. Alright, so I am here in a pretty basic scene, so if you want to learn how to do the lighting or anything like that, you can go ahead and watch um, some tutorials on my channel. I have a tutorial on some lighting tips and s stuff like that, and this bush is just a basic plane with the texture applied to it, uh, with set to alpha, and then I've just duplicated it around, rotated it, to kind of make this shape so it's pretty basic stuff if you don't know how to do it there is tutorials out there to show you um but anyway uh let's go ahead and continue on with the tutorial and also if you want to go ahead and get this texture you can go ahead and find them on pixabay i have a link to them uh there's some textures i made with that, the background cut out so you can go ahead and use them for whatever you like since they're licensed under cc0 all right so let's go ahead and start by getting the material ready so everything's good here i believe so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and come to the mesh settings settings and we're going to come down here to the uv maps now the reason we're coming down here to the uv maps is by default if you have a texture applied um, and you're using uv maps you'll see that this is getting mapped oh this is getting mapped by this um, so if we come in here and open this up and click UV image editor, you can see it's mapping to this. So that's how the texture's been mapped. And we can't bake ambient occlusion to that because then we're going to have problems with, uh, you know, it's going to keep, it's going to bake and it's going to bake over it and then we're only going to have one bake for all of these, which is not what we want. So the workaround that is you're going to add a new one and we're going to call this AO, and that stands for ambient occlusion, if you didn't know. And then we're going to go ahead and come over here to our texture and make sure that in the map, uh, we need to set it to the UV map we want. So you're going to go ahead and select the one you want. So you're going to select UV map. So the reason we're doing this is uh, if we were to go ahead and bake, or sorry, if we were to go ahead and UV unwrap this with uh, light map project or smart project it would mess up all the uvs because uh, if you do not have one selected it goes to the main one that's selected and that would go to ao so it would mess it up so you just want to go ahead and make sure that's selected in that category and we're just going to go ahead and go control a apply scale make sure your object scaled correctly and then we're going to go ahead and delete this and it's not going to delete it so it's going to make it not show up here and delete it when it's all selected and we're going to go u and I think we're going to go with light map project. So we click that. Gives us some options. Um, share texture space. Um, just leave this all how it is. And we're going to go ahead and, yep, that's good size, margin. This is the margin between the islands. Um, so depending on what you're going to do, if you're actually baking something that's not this, you would want a little bit of a margin because of the texture. What it will do is it will... Um, how do I explain this? It will like soften the edges and it will bake a little bit out. And then it'll, if those are close together, it will bake into each other and be weird and have weird problems uh, just because of how it works. So you want to have a little bit of a margin. So 0.1 should be fine. So we're just going to leave all the settings the same. We're going to click OK. So as you can see here, it's done. And by margin, it means this little thing I'm doing here so they're not touching. So now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and create a new texture. And this is going to be called AO for ambient occlusion, of course. And we're going to go UV color grid, just so we can see it working. So let's go ahead and come over here. Let's go new image. 
and this is going to be the AO. All right, so let's go ahead and come into here and we're going to remove this here because they did the wrong thing. We're going to come over here to the material and we're going to add that. So we're going to add this texture here and we need to call this AO. So as you can see now, each texture coordinates has its own texture and that, that actually looks quite cool of a bush with that texture. But now we can see it's all applying correctly. Let's go ahead and come over here down to bake and we're going to change this to ambient occlusion and we're going to click bake. All right, so by default, there's going to be a few things wrong with this. First of all, it goes from a sort of uh, mid gray to to a black, which we don't want. We want it going from a black to a pure white. So the way you can fix this is click normalize, click bake again. And now you can see that we are getting more of what we wanted. But if we were to go ahead and change this to multiply so we can actually see it working, as you can see, this whole bush is in darkness and it, it looks a bit ugly. So the way we can fix this is we want to, and also this is really grainy. The way you can fix this, changes to Blender Render because it's the only way you can find the settings. And we're going to come over here to the world settings. And in here you'll see we have some settings. Now they're grayed out, but we can still change them and they're going to affect it when we bake. So we're going to go ahead and change this to something like 15 samples. So this is how many samples it's going to take to render this. So it's going to render it less grainy kind of you know if you know how cycles works you know the more sampled less grain so 15 should work fine or something smaller if you have a slower computer and all right so that's done we also want to check this distance let's change this to something like two now this is distance between certain objects certain bits since ambient occlusion works between how close something is to see if it's occluded and make it dark so let's change this to something like two i think Alright, so let's go ahead and um, come over here, bake ham in occlusion. And as you can see, it's a much nicer, cleaner bake. And we should come over here. See this? Uh, it's not working. So the way I fix this is you just want to go ahead and go between those. And then you're going to go back, bake ham in occlusion again. If that if you have a problem or you can save it so as you can see here it's, it's still not working as best as we'd like as good as we'd like so i'm going to change this down to 0.5 a really small amount so let's go ahead and bake ambient occlusion and we're also going to go ahead and get rid because i do you think this makes a difference? Alt H. Alt H. Move these to another layer for just a second. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to make this shadeless so I can see how it's looking. So let's go ahead and bake ambient occlusion again. And see how this is going. So you see here is sometimes we get these ugly shadows here so you may want to just go ahead and delete one of these or move it around to see if you can get a better shadow uh, if you just clean it up sorry so i'm going to go point two really got to get the bake we want so let's go ahead and do that again and as you can see it's kind of working but i believe this should be something like point three five let's go ahead and bake again and see how that goes so as you can see now it looks pretty good one thing you're always going to probably have to do just so that it works better is change this color down a little bit so that it's not pure black change it up maybe a little bit alright All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and disable shadeless. And we're going to go only render. And we're going to enable... Ah, uh, do you not need to go only render? I just want to show it better. Um, 
Let's go disable that. So we can see these. Three. All right. So you want to go ahead and make sure that, is this shadeless still on? No. You want to make sure that color is at a good level. So you want to give it just that little bit of darkness down there so you can see that it looks nice. Uh, let's change this back to Blender Game. But you don't want to give it too much darkness that lights can't affect it. Now you also might want to do this with the ground. Just, um, rotate a little bit maybe to get the better side. As you can see it works a lot better and it would look a lot cleaner as well as if you have it on, if you bake it onto the ground as well. So you're going to have to play around with these. As you can see. But it's a bit hard to see with this one. It works better with trees and stuff. It really gives it that nice effect. So we can go ahead and just go disable, enable, disable, enable. You can really see the difference now. It gives it that nice extra little effect. You are going to want to change it a little bit. But now you can see it's really giving it a difference. Um, just changing the takes a little while to get the settings just right but once you do you can see it really makes a big difference so yeah there we go um there's just basic thing on how you can do it uh, there's plenty more things you can do but i thought i'll just go ahead and show you how to do this uh quickly although it's now a 13 minute tutorial but anyway that's how you bake shadows on to uh, your foliage to make more interesting foliage uh, bake it onto the ground as well and it will prove it a lot more but there we go if you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other subjects i do do a new tutorial every single week and you can go ahead and subscribe if you want to see those but other than that have a great week keep blending and make something cool